this is something that Teresa made up for um, quite a while, while ago. I think this goes back to 2000. Um, you know, I, it was a total last minute thing that we even brought it, but, but it, and the first part of it, the stuff you're, you all be familiar with, but it's fairly short and um, it does eventually get into a little bit of what we did. Yep. Um, there's a button here on the PDF that will yeah. twitch pages, but I haven't found it yet. Um, this is uh, the first um, completely assembled computer. You'll get arguments about who was first with that. And it depends on whether you look at delivery dates or who showed first and whatever. But uh, Tandy was um, uh, among the first anyway, <laughs> and probably was the first. Um, and uh, that, uh, Tandy really, uh, from our research, uh, there was a lot of controversy in uh, Tandy about whether or not this thing would actually sell. And in fact, they made up the original batch uh, to match the number of stores they had because they thought that, well, if it doesn't sell, we'll use it for store stuff. And I'm not sure how they were thinking they would put an accounting system on something with 4K, but uh, they, uh, they were optimistic. Um, th this, this is what they were promising. Um, in the uh, earliest days was uh, um, a uh, system that had hard drives and all, all that. But what they showed in the Boston show initially was just the uh, level one 4K machine. So um, all the rest they had there were sort of models of things. But uh, a lot of people really liked it and uh, so they sold, um, uh, they got orders for like 100,000 of them, <laughs> which, which they were not expecting. So uh, it took quite a while to actually get up to speed. Um, and if I remember this, this is, this is what we had at the start. And, um, That picture there, didn't we learn the woman in the picture was John Roach's secretary? I think so, yeah. That was our first. Uh, <laughs> well, it looks like the computer is sitting at a kitchen counter. Does everybody remember how we were all going to keep our recipes on the TRS 80 model one? And how absolutely ridiculous that is. But, but I mean, <laughs> Well, I was reading all these ads, and uh, I, I had more background in hardware than I did in software. I didn't know much about software. So when the computer appeared in Radio Shacks, I went in and started playing with it and learned basic standing up in a computer, in various computer stores. And nobody was, you know, um, pressing me. Uh, I just uh, played with the computer and the, the staff was very accommodating. <laughs> they got the Dolby, I guess. Um, and uh, I was doing that to figure out if I could really do anything with this thing because I didn't know uh, beans about software. Um, so we got one and I promised her that we would never upgrade. <laughs> uh, that, that lasted about three months, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, two guys are given credit uh, for the original TRS-80 Model 1. <clears throat> and um, some other folks uh, uh, had ideas that they, they were responsible too, but uh, these are the two main uh, folks. Don French, 
Um, he uh, he worked in in a computer store, and he put his um, uh, input and you know his uh, sales on a um, earlier computer that he had, and um, Tandy told him, "No, you can't submit that way. <laughs> you have you have to." To do it all in longhand like everyone else. <laughs> but uh, he, he was a champion of, of them getting a computer product. And um, Leininger was the guy who actually designed the thing. And um, they found him in uh, uh, San Francisco. And uh, they were, actually went to HP where he was working. Um, and asked uh, you know if anybody was doing this stuff, and they, he, he got the job of showing them the HP's little microprocessor, and um, they wanted to know where where can we see one of these newfangled computer stores, and so he uh, directed them out to where he worked at night. <laughs> and, uh, and then they wanted to talk to him about a job. So they hired him to do the computer. But at first, he wasn't doing anything with the computer. He was uh, straightening out a lot of their other projects that they had. Um, but then they, uh, you know, Don French and other people urged them to actually get on with the computer. And they set him up in a, um, what was it, a, a, a what? A tire factory was second. They, yeah, but anyway, in a you know uh, inappropriate space. See, I'd have to read my book again to <laughs> remember all this. Yeah. Anyway, those are the two guys, and uh, here's Bill Gates' uh, early quote on the. Um, that's right. Um, you know, there was a, there's a, a, a joke that politicians like that uh, where the reporter asked the guy, how long does it take to prepare a five minute speech? And the uh, uh, politician thinks about it and says, well, that, that'll take a week, two weeks maybe. And he says, what about an hour? And he says, well, I can do that in a day. He says, how about four hours? He says, I can do that right now. <laughs> So, so that's the position I'm in right now. <laughs> um, this is this is some of the things that people were advertising then. Um, anyway, I went. Uh, to, I learned basic standing up, and and then bought the computer, and um, wrote an accounting program for it on the. Uh, accounts receivable. I was a photographer at the time, and uh, the Model One had just enough memory to do about one month if you weren't keeping a lot of data. And, and I, uh, you know, realized that if our photo business expanded, um, that would be the end of the program because I wouldn't have enough RAM. So uh, that's when we upgraded. Um, but I, everybody, it was, that era was uh, an era where everything was new, you know. People said, what can you do with a computer? And a lot of people couldn't think of anything. But a lot of people said, hey, we could do this, we could do that, it would be wonderful if we had this, and, and they started doing it. Um, and I, I um, Joined a computer club. We joined a computer club uh, in uh, Michigan, and some of the memorable people in that computer club were um, Howard Brown. He was a, um, a big-time programmer for for uh, you know on the big machines for the IRS. I mean for the uh, Internal Revenue and. Uh, he, uh, um, well, you know, was writing a lot of code for it. He said he wrote programs that uh, 
that um, nobody was interested in and had no commercial value. <laughs> but, uh, but when you know, another guy there, I don't know if any of you know Vernon Hester or have heard of him, but uh, he wrote Multidos. And um, I met him when. Uh, 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 um, what? Here, you can run that. No, no, we're just losing the bottoms on some of them. That I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Vern Hesser, I met him when I uh, was at the computer club and I was discussing some things I learned about BASIC. Um, uh, in particular, how the, the coding was between lines. And uh, I demonstrated a few other tricks I'd picked up, you know, about the, capturing the video memory and uh, stuff like that. And he came over to me and he wanted to know all about the basic stuff. And I told him what I knew. And uh, a few uh, sessions later, uh, he came in to the club with this renumbered program. And it could not only renumber, it could move things around, it could do all sorts of stuff uh, from what he uh, learned about the basic. And um, then he didn't like the DOS, so he started modifying the DOS. <laughs> and that's how we got the multi-DOS. And he and I were uh, real good friends. And of course, one thing about doing programs back in those days is you didn't have much memory. So the, kind of the joke between us was he'd get multi-DOS down to one byte and I'd get lazy writer down to one byte. And then that would, you know, be the... <clears throat> so anyway, um, there were some other people who were hanging around at that time. Um, uh, Tim Watt. Uh, if you, I don't know if you heard of him, but uh, he was a hot young programmer then. And when I was started working on a word processor and in assembler, um, I was having a little trouble with uh, the keyboard. You know, I didn't want to use the ROM directly for the keyboard because I wanted to do other things with it. And he said, "Well, I can explain all that to you." So he came over, chain smoker, and he typing code like it was he was writing a letter to his girlfriend in assembler. And, uh, and he gave me the, the, uh, the basics for, for the decoding the keyboard. Um, except that later on, I learned that uh, most of it had been lifted from the ROM in the, in the TRC. So uh, it was because it was set up in a ROM and it was never going to move. Uh, they didn't use, uh, you know, they used only one byte for a table, so they could uh, cover two fifty-six things, and that's fine as long as it was in that uh, sector. But when the assembly moved it out of the sector at halfway through, suddenly it didn't work anymore. And so I went on. I, I used the original routine for like um, three or four years. And then one day I issued an update and the keyboard wouldn't work. <laughs> and I, again, I couldn't figure out what, what the, how do you debug something that's been working all this time? And uh, finally, after a uh, couple of nights of uh, frustration, I, I figured out what's going on. And there you go with the whole routine. <laughs> Um, I'm, what I'm saying and what, what I'm showing here are, isn't going well together, um, but um, uh, the thing that uh, was m most remarkable about that era is that there were all these people and they all had ideas and, you know, like we, uh, we had a 17-year-old kid who came in and um, he um, wanted to program and uh, he ended up writing a, uh, a lazy font, which was an extension to lazy writer that would let you do graphic uh, fonts. 
um, on the printing. And uh, I never had anything to do with that because uh, he did it himself. Um, and there were, and there were other, one other guy came in um, and uh, did a um, COM program for it, uh, you know, uh, uh, RS-232. And so it was just so much fun to have all that input. Um, when we started out, um, we, we uh, made some money and we sold the program around the world. But um, anything in computers that, uh, then didn't last all that long. Um, uh, some of the disk drive manufacturers, I remember one disk drive manufacturer bought another, I think it was Percom or something, and uh, you know they spent millions of dollars and then disk drives changed and they <laughs> went right down the tube. So the business curve for anything in that era of the early 80s was <laughs> and we, we, uh, we followed that business curve pretty much. Uh, and we extended it uh, a lot by writing extensions. But the trouble is when you make improvements to the current product, uh, then, you, then you don't have time to do any programming for, say, MS-DOS, which would have been probably more profitable in the end. Uh, so it, it's a dilemma that uh, you have if, if, you, if you love doing one particular uh, aspect of it. Um, you can uh, lose your um, your place in things because you're busy improving the old thing, and there's no money in that, as all of you know. <laughs> um, so, uh, here's a multi DOS. There's uh, L DOS and something else there, DOS Plus. Um, and we, uh, right now I have all those uh, DOSes and uh, I have uh, a uh, Model 4 computer and a, mo and a um, <coughs> Model 4P and a 3 and um, um, a level 2 one with expansion interface and I have an original m Model 1 level 1 4K computer, unmodified, that I bought at a garage sale. Actually, a guy gave it to me, I think. I bought something else from him, so he gave me that. <coughs> and um, I'm trying to figure out what to do with them now. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I, I, and, and we have uh, in our collection a lot of the books that I see on the uh, downstairs, um, or upstairs, right? <coughs> Um, here's a creative ads. Now, one of the things in the business, uh, in the line of business, was that um, when we first came out with Lazy Writer, there was only one place to put the ad, and that was 80 Micro. And uh, they were relatively cheap. You could, you could get a full page for a thousand bucks and uh, around there and um, you know uh, you would be reaching most of the people but um, as time went on all these other magazines came out and and including uh, one called Byte remember Byte well Byte was um, not a TR Sadie magazine but it was a phone book and they wanted like five thousand dollars for their, for an ad, and uh, you know an ad from us would get lost in that. Uh, so <clears throat> that's why uh, the active part of the business only lasted until about eighty five or so, eighty six, and, and then um, Teresa, because she had learned to um, document programs. Got a good, pretty good job at uh, at uh, EDS, um, and that's a whole other story. But uh, I I um, 
I ended up um, selling a few copies now and then and taking care of the, my, my daughter for a while. And uh, then I tried to get back into the photo business, which uh, where I found, found out that if you're in that personal service business and you leave it and then you come back, it's very difficult. <laughs> but um, that's uh, the, the, the early days of, um, of the uh, TRS-80 were, were full of promise and full of excitement. And uh, I'll never forget that. Um, on the other hand, the long decline of the business, I would rather forget. <laughs> anyway, um, just to tell you a little bit about Lazy Writer, if you haven't ever had any encounters with it, uh, it started out to be uh, you know, word processor and uh, it could do various things, insert and delete and all the standard stuff and move, move blocks of text around and uh, a format to some extent. Um, and I, was, I worked on that for uh, about a year and uh, then we took it to the Boston Computer Show and I was still working on it late at night when uh, we were supposed to get up and get our tickets together and go there. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, correcting a few things. Yeah, so when we got to the show, um, I said, I, I, the first thing I did was sit down at the computer and continue working. So I was actually working on it while we were about to try to sell it. And, uh, you know, at one point there was somebody went by with a giant vacuum cleaner and the computer booted. And uh, I, t I told everybody I sold it to at the show, they were going to get a quick update. <laughs> But uh, over, over, the, over time, um, I learned to write assembler in uh, a more organized fashion. And because uh, uh, in a big program, you, you've got to um, do that almost. Uh, and assembler is, is as easy to use as basic once you get all the subroutines written that, that are good solid subroutines that you can call. Then, then it's lots of fun. Um, and you can make a similar do just about anything the computer can possibly do. So uh, that, that's, um, that's why, uh, that's not why we, I did it though, because uh, the TR-80 to do a word processor, especially the Model 1, was a little too slow uh, to do it in basic or any higher language. You had to have a similar to make it fast enough to be viable. Move that along because we, we, we do get to okay. us eventually and they're our product. All right. Yeah, so because this is just stuff that these guys all know, right? So, um, this was uh, uh, the magazines. Yeah. And we still have all of them. So, in fact, we have such a complete set of bite magazines that have boxes and boxes. Yeah. We have if, all the 80 micros. If you guys want to, um, um, peruse this uh, little presentation. It's online, it's online at uh, Computer Pioneers. Microcomputerpioneers.com. Yeah. Microcomputerpioneers.com. Scroll down, you'll find a link for this. Now we get into our, our business. These are the two young ladies we employed who um, uh, were students at a business college right near our, our office, which was on. Michigan Avenue in Dearborn, and um, they were they were wonderful. Um, they worked worked very hard, and um, uh, yeah, I think I think the most people we employed were were about seven people. 
Yeah. And and a couple of co uh, coders who were you know worked in we worked in conjunction with but uh, weren't employees. Um, and uh, in in the end, we had a wonderful program that was obsolete because <laughs> everybody was going to Windows. And I, I started on an MS DOS version of it, but I, I, and I did some interesting things there, but um, I, I, I just uh, at some point gave up. You know, it, it, the the environment had changed. When we start out, one person or two people or people with minimum financing could uh, start a business based on it and uh, write a major system. And um, that uh, those days were over, you know. I, at uh, some point, uh, uh, WordStar laid off a hundred people, and I joked that we'd have to lay off, uh, we'd have to hire uh, ninety-five people in order to do that. <laughs> but that, but that was uh, the fun of it, and and. Uh, Yeah, I see that. Yeah. I don't know how to get rid of it, though. Um, PDF is a wonderful uh, invention, except that each PDF is a little different. <laughs> so uh, I think I pressed. No, can't. Uh... Oh, there's it. That's another unwanted version, but um, it's better than what we had. We had so many problems with, with printers because the word processor, well, that's nothing if you don't get the copy from it. Today, everything just goes to a screen, you know, but, but in these days, you, it, you wanted to print an output. How do you test your software if you told that the printers will probably be available like that? How do I what? How would you test your software? Almost all the printers you have. Well, people gave us printers after a while. We and got. We still have a whole lot. Yeah, we. <laughs> you know, I've been telling them because a lot of this stuff is historic, and I don't want to just throw it out. But who the hell wants the old dot matrix printers? Or even uh, that old. Somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I, we've got them, and I want them out of my garage, and my basement, and everywhere else. I think you'll uh, find somebody. Locally, or it's going to drive that will take anything off your hands you want to get rid of. Oh, you no, I, I agree. That's what I'm telling them. Yeah, we live in a place where, yeah, in fact, I'm a scavenger myself. You know, people put stuff out at the curb, they would disappear quickly. I, I know that's, but you know, it, it's hard to throw out things that have meant something to you. But, but really, these printers, it's time, you know. Yeah, um, uh, that's her opinion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> um, let me just uh, close by sort of summarizing some of the things that we did with Lazy Writer that uh, sort of illustrates how um, fresh the whole thing, you know, the whole environment was. Um, I put in uh, uh, macros uh, in, the, in the word processor, and um, I didn't know what to call them. I hadn't heard of macros. <laughs> so I called them X keys, and and but essentially they were macros, and they and you could do a lot of stuff with them uh, if anyone wanted to do that, you know. Um, and um, we had a help file, and um, the uh, uh, program was arranged in modules so that. Um, when you finished writing, uh, you could uh, go out to the printer and it would load the printer, whole printer complex and uh, to take care of that. So, so everything fit in the first 16K um, until, the, until the end. Um, <clears throat> and there was a, a formatter program that came along to, that would, uh, indicate the format that you were going to, how it was going to be printed on the, 
on the uh, screen. And, and that's, that was a little bit of a problem because, uh, you know, all, most of those computers are 64 characters across and people wanted to print larger. So it, it wrapped at the end, but it gave you an idea of what your final uh, thing was going to be. And of course, there were no graphics, so there wasn't any way of showing headlines except to uh, identify them by font changes or something. But, um, uh, but we, we uh, and, and uh, the con with the little con program that uh, um, uh, the fellow wrote worked great and uh, you know, Going back to printers, though, tell them about our first printer, the, the letter quality. I don't know if yeah, that, on that's on another slide the, the get, to get a uh, you know, really nice output. The IBM Selectric was the thing you know, that our yeah. offices had. And, and the next quality. best thing was the daisy wheel. So we, uh, <clears throat> we got a QM daisy wheel printer, and if I recall, the cost was $3,000. Yep. You know, Yep, and which, then um, you, you had different wheels, the type fonts were on the, the wheel, and um, so if you wanted to change font, we, he had in his program stop codes, and you know, you could stop it, take the wheel off and put on a different yeah. wheel, you know, and then you started it back up, and, um, and there were a lot of silly things like, like that. The, the dot matrix printers had their own troubles. Yeah, well, um, then along come the MX-80. They, they use he, ribbons, just like a typewriter. And um, like when I was working on the, the manual, and I'd want to get a print out of my work. We would, I'd start it printing, and we'd go out to dinner and come back, and it would have stopped because it ran out of ribbon. The printer ran out, would run out of ribbon, and you'd put another ribbon in there, and it would continue printing, you know, and that was the only way I could get the whole print out. So, you know, I guess that's not so bad if you're sitting there, but it, well, it just sounds ridiculous today. Yeah. Know, the, the, well, a lot of things were, but, uh, things were but they, but they kept me on my toes because when, um, when the MX-80 came out, it had double wide and I said, double wide, how do I get that into the program? Well, uh, I wrote it in and then they came out with other stuff and italics and different things. And so um, I ended up with a uh, little addition to the program called PrintGen, which allowed the user to set up the codes for all the diff any different printer that he had. So if he knew what it did and knew what the codes were, they could put it, he could put it in PrintGen and from then on the code, that would work. So. Yeah, um, this was, oh, yeah, okay. oh Le Electric Webster, we became acquainted with a guy who did Electric Webster because, um, you know, he did a, a, a version that worked with our program. And, uh, and then um, uh, the Webster company sued him. <laughs> and they, they had a, a long, drawn out battle with that, but finally they agreed. He paid them some money and he was able to use Electric Webster and uh, put it on other products. So I don't know how exactly it came out on that. But by this time, people were using uh, Lazy Writer in business. Uh, on, and, uh, you know, one of the things that I felt bad about was I got a letter from somebody who said uh, they'd hired a secretary and she couldn't learn lazy writer, so they fired her. <laughs> I, I, I tried to make it uh, accessible to everybody, but apparently uh, it wasn't to her. Um, and then this fellow contacted us and uh, he wanted to do legal forms and be able to substitute uh, you know, certain things like names of parties and so forth in the legal forms easily. And so we wrote, I wrote an extension that would do that. And uh, we sold some of those. And, uh, but uh, it, in the end, you know, you, you come to a place where you can't uh, make it commercially attractive anymore 
to to do it when there are things like windows coming out and so forth and uh, doing things in a slicker way. Although the first va version of Windows I had crashed about every half hour. <laughs> but it still had a, a draw to it. Anyway, that's uh, about all I... Um, there's some more? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I keep it going because uh, we're using up somebody else's time. Yeah, just, I mean, just flip through it. This is stuff about, uh, <laughs> yeah, this one. Yeah, this is a. Yeah, this is a real picture, though, of this guy and his real secretary really using Lazy Rider. This, this was an ad. This was from an ad. Uh, this is guy working with a one one tape machine. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ads got way ahead at some point of what computers could actually give you. You know, because the ad was a, was a. Uh, highly graphic fantasy made up by the um, uh, advertising department, and yeah. computers were still real. But speaking <laughs> of advertising department, we never had one. I made up all the ads, and, um, and so did everybody else. Uh, uh, Vern Hester did all his ad. That one that they had on earlier with all the chicks with the cheap, 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 that was his work. You know? <laughs> <laughs> A better programmer so, than a marketer, but <laughs> yeah. So I mean the ads, but this was another thing that was big. We did this originally for a, a much bigger show back in two thousand, and uh, uh, the, that, that's our daughter, yeah. Amy. The, the, these kind of robots were were popular, and people were making a big deal out, out of them. And this Cubot thing really, I thought, was ridiculous too. Every household would want one. Yeah, the thing wheeling <laughs> around your house. What exactly was it going to do? You know, uh, eventually, of course, robots found their way into factories and all kinds of places, but none of them looked like Cubot. So. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, this is one of my favorite sl slides. Yeah, uh, of uh, John Roach and the, the Schlock image here. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. They ta may have tackled their slack image, but uh, they went out of business. <coughs> I don't know. Anyhow. Well, how many of you guys have our book? Yeah, that's why we were finding everybody, you know, nearly everybody has one. Uh, so we didn't sell any books, but that's fine. Because that's a, we didn't write it to make, it make a huge amount of money. We wrote it to get the people like you that were interested. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, how much are you charging for the books if anybody wants to buy one? Uh, 15 bucks. Yeah, the, that's a show special, I guess. Um, we printed the book uh, in, in the first printing, was sold out. But uh, that sounds more impressive until you know the first printing was only 500. <laughs> but uh, we did a second printing and uh, we're down to um, about 140 or so. No, 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 about 110. 110, okay. So uh, when that runs out, we'll probably uh, still make it available on demand, on uh, uh, you know, demand printing. Um, and it is out in uh, ebook form as well. So that's, that was one of uh, our little surprises. Uh, uh, we were contacted and somebody wanted to bundle it with a bunch of other books. And uh, we said, well, okay, well, what can it hurt, you know? So they did that. And uh, what was the, what, what did they give us a, a check for um, $1,000 or? I forget the exact amount, but it was a lot more than yeah, we expected. <laughs> I think it probably also killed some sales because somebody, some people, you know, they, they could take that bundle and split it up and uh, give it to their friends. But, uh, you know, at this point, we're, we're, you know, we're not terribly, um, that, that doesn't bother us that much, you know. Did you write uh, a book with Lazy Rider? Yeah. Well, well, no, uh, we uh, we didn't write it with Lazy Writer, uh, that book, but we did write 
the manuals for everything with Lazy Rider. And um, we, and they were pretty good manuals because she wrote them. Oh, yeah, I think we were beyond using Lazy Rider. This, I um, had, finally had the time. We had kind of worked on this a little bit. When I got laid off from my contract job at Ford Motor Company. I now had the time and got, got the thing uh, together. Yeah, um, the well, lazy writer. The lazy writer manuals has illustrations in it and has uh, various things. Um, I don't know. As um, I can't remember if it was all done by software, though. Some of those illustrations might have been done other ways and then pasted in. Um, but a lot of it was, and by then it, it, we had lazy font attached to Lazy Writer, and we used that for headlines and things like that. So, so uh, yeah, it was a, a very useful word processor. And um, when we, before we ever got into computers uh, as such, there was a store in the area that opened up with um, uh, the newest thing, you know, computers, Altair and uh, that variety of computer. And so we went out there to investigate and say, you know, find out if, um, if they had a word processing program. And the guy says, well, you know, it'll cost you X amount for the printer, it'll cost you that much for the computer, and as to the word processing program, I'm writing the best one right now. <laughs> that was, and it came to $7,000. <laughs> which was back in the in late 70s, that was the, um, you know, like almost like $70,000 would be today. Uh, so n needless to say, we didn't uh, buy the word processor. But one of the things that I really wanted to do with the computer when I got it is turn it into some kind of a word processor. Well, because I yes, well, so was I yeah, some, yeah. Some, some days. And, and uh, Model 1, Level 1 was obviously not suitable for that. And even when you get to Level 2, there, there's, uh, there was, everything was all uppercase. And so in the earliest versions of Lazy Writer, I, I uh, put a mode in where you mark the uppercase ones with a, a, a you know, a, um, special character. So you could see where the uppercase was. <laughs> If you didn't have an uh, um, uppercase mod, so um, so we got the word processor eventually through years of hard work. <laughs> but near the end, keep going. I don't okay. remember how many more there are. And that was a, oh, here's that quote from Mark Schlager. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think the IBM PC was going anywhere. Said so I had a TRS-80 machine that had a 10 or 15 megabyte, megabyte hard drive, internal double-sided 80-track drives, speed kit, custom monitor. This machine was tricked out, a state-of-the-art computer. And we looked over at the IPM, IBM PC, and we said, this machine has no chance. Um, but. Uh, you know, that reminds me of a, um, when we saw our first Mac. And um, our impression of the Mac was it wasn't going to go anywhere either. <laughs> but the, the computer, that computer um, period in computing was uh, it, the uh, Industrial Revolution speeded up because that's what happens when progress is made. When progress is made, then the people who um, are not at the front edge of that uh, get lost. And this happened very fast in uh, early computing. But it happens in industrial societies everywhere. You know, in Detroit, where we hail from, uh, they, the uh, people who um, were the king of things were the tool and die makers. And 
Uh, then sometime during the late 80s, all that technology started to change. And uh, tool and giant, if you're a regular tool and die maker, you either had to relearn your trade or you were out of business. They wouldn't even talk to you. <laughs> so um, progress is a wonderful thing as long as you're in the front end of the progress. <laughs> OK. Um, I think this is about it for the, well, here we go. Oh, this is just a pitch on the book. Anyway, we, we would have had a better um, presentation for you um, if we had realized we were actually coming, but we didn't just decide that until uh, uh, late in the week last week. And so I'm glad we could contribute something and uh, I'll get out of the way of the next speaker. Thank you.